church, everybody. What an atmosphere of worship. I love coming to climb because the atmosphere is just amazing. Especially the Mandarin service. Thank you, thank you. And my goodness, look, look at the Mandarin service, how it has grown. Give Pastor Edward and yourselves a big round of applause. Great, great team, great job. Everybody's running this every week with excellence. And look at the result, it's growing, amazing. Today I'm uh, calling my message of swords and crosses. Very deep meaning, but you'll get it later, you'll try to kind of understand, because now at the moment you're wondering, what is this going to do with swords, swords and crosses? What, what are you talking about? You'll get it later. But let me ask you, let me see if I'm speaking to real people here, okay? How many of you are going through a battle right now? Like, like the enemy is attacking you. Like you're getting attacked, or you're, you're having a struggle, or some kind of issue that you're dealing with. Can I see your hands? That's good, most of you are fine. But the rest of you are having trouble. It's okay, then I'll be preaching to you today. Some real people in the house. I mean, how, let, let me just ask you again, right? Those who put up your hands just now. How many of you are feeling like, I thought this year, when I started this year, the church said this year is a year of what? Thrive. So we're supposed to be on new levels, a year of thrive. And I started 2018 thinking this year everything is going to go right. And no, it all went wrong. It seems that I'm being attacked left, right, center, but I'm supposed to be thriving. What's going on? So, How many of you feeling like that? Can I see your hands? I know I am. I'm preaching to myself more than anybody else today. This is the only reason why you're being attacked. I want you to know this. It's because you're a marked man or a marked woman. You know what it means to be a marked person? It means that the enemy knows who you are because you are a threat to his kingdom. See, when you start conquering darkness, when you start living your life right, when you start moving into the destiny or the purpose that God has planned for you, the minute you start walking that road, you're, you become a marked man. You know why? Because you are a threat now to the kingdom of darkness. And the minute you are a threat to all of hell, hell knows your name. Should I just live a mediocre life then so that the devil will not attack me? Either way, he wants to kill you. I'm here to tell you today that despite your name being written in hell and they know who you are, you are going to thrive. Because 
In fact, this obstacle, this issue, this attack that you're going through is needed in order for you to thrive. Jesus needed to go to the cross and die suffering so that he could rise again. If the death did not happen, the resurrection can't happen. Make sense? Amen. But I have to say this. I'm going to have to state a disclaimer now. Okay? The reason I'm going to state this disclaimer is because some people may use this message and become lazy. See, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that every attack in your life Every hardship, every difficulty in your life is because hell is attacking you. No. Because some, or if not most of the things that we are going through, most of the hardships that we face, are actually just consequences of our own doing. For example, partying all night on a Saturday until 4 to 5 a.m. and then not being able to stay awake during service on Sunday is not the devil attacking you or the devil is attacking me so I can't stay awake. No, no, it's got nothing to do with the devil. It's got everything to do with your indiscipline. 就好像比如說,你你星期日早上不能夠來聚會,是因為是因為你在前一天晚上星期六你就去了巴蒂到4點5點早上一樣。Like bumming around, not having a job, lazy, don't want to work and then saying, you know, pastor pray for me because the devil is controlling my finances. The devil is not controlling your finances. You it the reason why you don't have money, you're broke is because it's a result of your consequences, is consequences of your indiscipline. Or your laziness. 就好像我們因為我們沒有工作而懶散不工作的話,我們就不能夠在我們的這個的財務上能夠巩固起來,而這這個不是我們不能夠怪上帝,有這一個或者是像撒旦說他是來攻擊。Throwing a tantrum, getting angry with your leaders when you are corrected, when you are you know, realigned and disciplined, getting angry with them and saying, you know, the devil is using even my leaders to attack me. No, no, it's got nothing to do with the devil. The reason you're being corrected is because you got a bad attitude. The word of God says, do not touch that unclean thing. But we want to climb the stairs and go and see this little temple here and there and then play around with this tiki god and that tiki god. Keep this emblem from some country into, in your small cupboard. And then you say, oh, the devil is sitting in my house. No, no, it's got nothing to do with the devil. It's consequences of your disobedience. That is not the, the kind of troubles I'm talking about today. And these are true stories, by the way. The things that I just stated are actual real life stories. I, I have this one story that I need to tell you. I will not mention this person's name because it's recorded, but I'll change this person's sex, gender. Oh wait, there's only two. Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> so this person, this guy, so obviously, you know, this guy, whom I've been bringing to church for a while, for, a, for, for some reason now decides that he needs to speak to me. And he says, Pastor, I've got something very important you need to pray for me. You see, every Sunday morning, I want to come to church. I really want to come. I, I'm ready to come to church. But every Sunday morning, the devil is in my house. He makes me tired. He keeps me in bed so that I cannot wake up and come to church. 
比如说啊，牧师，我我我每一个星期天都很想来教会，可是这个撒旦的每一个星期天都导致我很累，我一直在睡在床上，不能够来教会。I thought, my goodness, that is very, very deep. It's so deep, I needed to run around the mango tree three times, sprinkle some oil before I get a revelation of how to answer him back. 所以我以为这个是非常深奥的，我一直在想着如何要解决这个的问题。He said, "See, the devil is in my house every Sunday. I'm thinking this guy must be very important. You know why?" You know that the devil is not omnipresent, meaning that if he's in your house at a certain time, he can't be in my house at the same time. He's not God. He's not omnipresent. He's bound by space and time, and even time zones. Ah, 就好像这个撒旦，其实他并不能够同时在我的家，或者是在你的家，因为他受到这个时间，受到这个空间这个的限制。What's the population of the world today? Sixty billion? Six billion? Seven billion? Seven billion? Billion or million, billion. My goodness, out of seven billion people in this world, the devil sits in this person's house every Sunday. Very important guy. 就是现在我们全球有六十亿的人口，就是说没有可能这一个的撒旦只是坐在这个人的家当中。You need to pray for me, Pastor. You see, the devil knows my potential. He says because the devil knows that if I wake up and go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because this Satan knows that if I go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because this Satan knows that if I go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because this Satan knows that if I go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because this Satan knows that if I go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because this Satan knows that if I go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because this Satan knows that if I go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because this Satan knows that if I go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because this Satan knows that if I go to church, I will change the world. So the devil does everything to keep me in bed. I cannot wake up on Sunday. Because But the devil is there every morning, Pastor. So he says, "I'm usually up at 4:00 to 5:00 in the morning to sleep. But that Satan is always there." The devil is not stopping you from coming to church. I told him. So I, I told him, "Actually, Satan did not stop you from coming to church. It has nothing to do with the devil. It has nothing to do with the devil. It's just your plain indiscipline of not sleeping early and not being able to wake up on a Sunday morning. That's all. It's just your plain indiscipline of not sleeping early and not being able to wake up on a Sunday morning. That's all. 只是你自己纪律上的问题，你没有按时好好的休息睡觉而明。隔天早上不能够醒来到教会去。I'm not talking about that kind of troubles. 我不是在讲那一种这样的这一些的问题。I'm talking about you who are stepping up, being obedient to the word of God, bringing the gospel into your families, into your relationships, into your schools, into your workplaces. I'm talking about you. 所以我是讲到你那一些刚刚你要为神而工作，是把你这个福音传到家里面、你的工作的地方、你的学校里面。I'm talking about you who's taking a step of faith in giving when you yourself don't have enough, but you're taking a step of faith being obedient to the word and giving, taking a step of faith in loving people who are not lovable, forgiving people who have hurt you. I'm talking about people who are being obedient to the word of God, yet you're getting attacked. 我是讲到那一些顺服上帝的话 ，Thank you， 顺服上帝的话的人呢，就是说去做上帝的话而得到这个攻击这种这样的情况。I'm talking about you who are terrorizing hell with every word you speak, with every song you sing, with every prayer you pray, and every dollar you give。就是是讲到，就算你在唱着这些赞美的诗歌，就算你在给的这个奉献，你还是面对这个问题。I'm talking about you who's trying to live right and doing everything according to the word, making mistakes, yes, but the devil is coming at you even though you're doing it right. 虽然你是仍然的靠着上帝的恩典，活出上帝的话语，你仍然的还是受着这一些这一些撒旦的攻击。我是在讲这一些的人。Turn to your neighbor and say he's talking about you. 跟你隔壁的讲，他是在讲着你。Now turn to your neighbor who's not a bum and say he's talking about you. 这也跟跟那隔壁人讲，他不是在跟你讲这个人。Now turn to your neighbor, who's the guy who's always showing tantrum, not showing up on Sunday, showing tantrum on Facebook. My leader is always attacking me, and tell tell that guy he's not talking about you. 也就是说，每你跟你隔壁那个每次都发这个脾气人讲，那他不是在跟你讲这番话。Stop looking around. He's not here. He's in the other church. I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. Just kidding. Disclaimer. Cut that out from the recording. Not like he listens anyway. So, <laughs> all right. Turn to your neighbor and say again, "I am a marked man." 跟你隔壁人讲，我是一个有印记的人。See, you're facing this injustice. You're facing this persecution. You're facing all these attacks when you've done nothing wrong, simply because. 
，因为就算你没有做错任何事情，你仍然受到这些的攻击，这些不公平的对待。因为呢 ，Someone once said this. 有一个人曾经这么说 ：The devil can only distract what he cannot destroy. 有人曾经这么说：魔鬼只能够分散。他不，他所不能够摧毁的这些东西。In my personal life, I'm going through a lot of battles at this moment, and think, and I'm thinking, what is going on? I'm getting attacked left, right, center, from the from the from the area of family to the area of ministry, in work, every direction, the enemy is coming at me. 就像现在我的情况里面，我我现在在，就是我有面对着很多的挑战，无论在在我的侍奉上，在我的家庭里面，都面对着这些的挑战。Coming at us as a family， 就是说他们是冲着我这个家人而来。And my friend, who's a good friend, is good to have good friends that pray for you。那我我其实我一个好朋友，其实是有好朋友是很好的。He he doesn't come to this church. He goes to Pastor Clarence Church. Prays for me all the time, for our ministry. And he gets a word from God. He sends me a message from this guy, Pastor Michael Todd. 然后他这个我的这个好朋友就他就把这个信息从这一个的麦克牧师所讲的话，他就把这句话送给我。When I was sitting and preparing this message today, I was thinking, what am I going to share? I don't have a testimony. After his message, it shifted my whole mindset. I don't have to wait for the victory to talk about the victory. The victory is already mine. And this is how we got the message today. 原先我是不懂要怎么跟你们分享，可是当我看到这个信息之后呢，我就知道原来这个信息是一个得胜的信息。我就是要分享这个的信息。See, the devil can only distract what he cannot destroy. 就是魔鬼只能够分散他所不能够摧毁的。You see, the devil knows your potential. 撒旦知道你的这个的这这个的啊这个的潜能。The devil knows that your father has a destiny for you. 他就是撒旦知道父天父有一个特别的目的给你。And the devil also knows he cannot destroy that destiny. 撒旦也知道他不能够摧毁那一个的目的地。The only person that can stand in the way of your destiny or your God-given purpose is you. 那一个站在那个去到你这个目的地的地方就是你自己。So if we can keep you and I busy fighting off battles that we don't need, keep ourselves Tired. Eventually, he can steal the word that God has put in your heart and my heart. 只要这个撒旦他使得我们忙碌的话，不不听取上帝的话，他就能够把你整个人引过来了。So he can't destroy our destiny, but he can get us distracted from our destiny. 他不能够摧毁我们的目的地，可是他能够使得我们对我们的目的地分散这个注意力。And then we miss our whole destiny, live our lives mediocre lives till the day we die. 这样我们就失去这个能够为主活出最精彩的生命。I truly believe that God appointed me today, assigned me today. I am on assignment. 就是我相信今天我是被上帝所委派的。Some of you all just woke up and came to church as your regular Sunday thing, but let me tell you, you didn't just show up in church because it's your regular Sunday thing. You've been assigned. 就其实，我们每一个人在星期天早上起来的时候，我们并不是只是单单来到教会这么简单。We've been assigned to each other today, so that we can get rid of the distraction, expose the trap of the enemy, and refocus our our lives on the Word of God. 你是就是说被委派能够，就是说除去这一个呢，他这这个的分散而集中在上帝的身上。Until what time do I have, Mila? 10:20. Okay, still got time. So let me show you a scripture. Isaiah 43, verse one. 那我来这给你看一节的圣经，这个就是以赛亚书四十三章一节。This is the word of God for you. 这个就是上帝给你的话语。So you're a marked man in hell, right? 这个就是在这个在地狱的你是一个被打上印记的人。Let me show you what heaven says. 那你望我给你知道天堂说什么。But now, everybody say, but now. Thus says the Lord that created you, He that had formed you, fear not. 在这里讲，他创造你的耶和华以色列造成你的那一位，现在如此说，你不要害怕。For I have redeemed you. 因为我已经救赎了你。And I have called you by your name. 因为我曾提你的名召你。Do you know how powerful that scripture is? 你知道这个经文是多么的强而有力吗 
all of hell knows your name because you're working on the right track now you're terrorizing hell but guess what God knows your name as well I may not know most of your names I don't even know how to spell my own name sometimes there's a V and a W in my name I get confused sometimes I put a W and a V it's very confusing but my God knows my name he doesn't just know my name he called me by my name he doesn't just call, you know, the section, the guys who are sitting on the left, this section, you guys are going to do great. He does not do that. He calls you by name. He goes, Felicia Ho! <laughs> Who's that? I called you. You're not just a marked man in hell. You're marked by heaven. In 1997, in a small shop lot building church called Christian Life Center, in a February of 1997, I walked into this building and I saw a bunch of crazy people on the stage doing crazy things with awesome music, music that I did not understand, and then this crazy guitarist with a mullet puts the guitar down and gives a speech, a preach. I don't know how, I didn't know what the preaching was. And then he preaches about this Jesus that I've never heard of and this God that I don't know. But I know that day when I walked into the church, into that building, I was called. John chapter 15 verse 16 says this. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you. Sometimes we give ourselves too much credit, you know, the testimonies when we share. Oh, I was lost, and then I was looking, where should I go? And I had so much of things in my life, and then one day I decided, you know, it's time to get it right. So I chose to follow Jesus. Don't know, we give ourselves too much credit. You didn't choose to follow nobody. He chose you. Do you know how powerful that is? That means me. I know how terrible I am. I'm, Paul says, I am the chief of sinners. He doesn't know. He never met me. I am the chief of chief of sinners. Yet, in 1997, he chose me. And in 2018, today, he chose me again. And he chose you. And he appointed you. You're not here because someone just dragged you here. You're not here because you showed up here. You're not here because it's the right thing to do. You're here because he chose for you to be here. Tell the devil now, I am marked by heaven. So now, let's get to the tough question. So that's amazing, right? We know that the, we're getting attacked. The enemy is attacking us. And then now you've, tell, you've told me, Pastor, that, that, wow, I am also marked by heaven. Brilliant. But tomorrow, when I go to work, that monkey is still going to be on the table. He's still going to be right in front of my face, bugging me that battles are still going to be there, that lawyer is still going to be there, that letter, that bill, everything is still going to be there. What do I do with these battles then? I know I'm marked by heaven, but what do I do? I know I'm marked by heaven, but Again, true story about the monkey in the office. What then do I do? Do I retaliate? 
Do I also tell the boss all the bad things that's going on with my colleague? Do I also take up a case against so and so and get a lawyer's letter against somebody else? Do I strike back? Let me just give you three points today on how to handle the battles that we didn't ask for. Number one, know when the battle isn't yours. Which brings me to my title of Swords and Crosses. We need to know when to carry our cross, our sword. We need to know when to carry our cross. The cross is a symbol of sacrifice. It means while you're carrying your cross, you have your sword here. You know you can use that sword, but you decide, I'm going to sheath my sword and carry my cross. Because the battle is not mine. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, we don't have time to go through it, but if you can read through it, it's the story of David and how David now has rose up to the ranks. He started off as his shepherd boy, kills Goliath. Now he moves up in the ranks of Saul's army, becomes Saul's number one general. But because David was getting so popular, Saul got jealous and insecure. Now Saul issues an order to kill David and all his men. He outlaws David, so David is now on the run. So and then one day, David and his men were hiding in this cave, a huge cave, right? And King Saul comes into the cave alone, not knowing David was there to relieve himself, you know, relieve himself. Very private man, didn't want to do it in public, he went to the cave. And David was right there. David's men told him, the Lord has handed your enemy over, kill him. David had his sword with him. He was trained to use it. He was a fighter, a warrior. He could have killed Saul like that. He was also anointed to be king. Which means if he take Saul out that day, he'll be king immediately. He could have done it, could have taken out Saul. But David decides to sheath his sword and carry his cross. You know why? The only way he could have killed Saul is by killing him from the back. David was a man of honor. So he spared Saul's life that day because he was not going to fight someone who was not facing him. Few chapters before that, he takes up his sword, he kills Goliath. So that means it's not every battle that we use the cross. There are some battles that we need to go head on with the sword and slice that giant off. Yes. 
But not every battle that comes to you is the battle of a giant. Sometimes it's a battle with the king. So we need to know when to use the sword and when to use the cross. Let me give you another scripture. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. This word meek is a very interesting word. If you Google it today or you go and see any dictionary, it will give you these meanings. The word meek as defined by the world is weak, a victim, timid, spineless, passive, and sissy like, like a sissy, you know? Like, I don't know how to do a sissy, but a little bit, come on, can you show? <laughs> like a sissy. 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 It's not what the Bible meant. I tell you why. Because in Matthew 11, 29, Jesus declared himself as meek. Anything sissy like about Jesus? You all know who Moses is? Moses is a bad, bad man. I mean, not bad as in bad attitude. I mean, he's, he's powerful. He's a strong. He's a gangster. He's a man. He's so powerful, he told the king what he wants to be done. Yet in Numbers 12, verse 3, the Bible describes Moses as the meekest man in all the earth. So obviously that's not what the Bible meant when they said the meek shall inherit the earth. Let me give you the true meaning of the word meek. The word meek comes from the original Greek text called praos. It's not, it's not a word in the Greek, it's a term, a terminology used to describe something, the, word, the term prowess. Which simply means strength under control. The, the, word, the term came from describing Wild horses, you don't know what wild horses are. So wild horses that were brought and taught how to be in battle. They are still wild, they are still powerful, but now they are taught to be disciplined to only move when their commander says move. These horses were not tame. They are still wild. They're still powerful. They're still fearless. Only difference is now they only move when the commander says go. If the commander says stay, they would stay, but they're still powerful. The meek shall inherit the earth. It's not a weak thing to sheath your sword and to carry your cross in time of battle. It's not a weak thing to not retaliate at that colleague or that school person or that family member who's just non-stop attacking you. And you know you can take him out, but you know also this is the Lord's better. It's not weak for you to turn the other cheek. 
在当时就是说，如你你随时可以反抗的时候，你选择把十字架拿上，并不是你是软弱的。Because remember, you always got the cross, uh, the sword. 你要知道，你时常都有那把剑。But you have decided, I'm going to be meek. 可是你选择了成为一个温柔的人。I, I will not use my sword. I'm going to use my cross. 我不要选择用剑，我要选择用这个十字架。It's a sacrifice, right? 这个是一个牺牲。So number one, know when the battle isn't yours. Number two, know who fights for you. Second Chronicles 20 verse 15 says this, Listen, King Jehoshaphat who lived in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours but God's. 在这里讲到历代之下二十章十五节，他说到犹大众人、耶路撒的居民和约撒法王，你们请听，耶和华对你们如此说：不要因这大军恐慌、恐惧、啊、呃、惊慌，因为胜败不在乎你们，而是在乎神。We need to know who fights for us. 你要知道谁为你打仗。It's not your lawyer that's fighting for you. 不是你的律师为你打仗。It's not your pastor that's fighting for you. 不是你的牧师为你打仗。It's not your husband or your wife that's fighting for you. 不是他那个丈夫是妻子为你打仗。It's not your teacher or your lecturer or your boss that's fighting for you. 不是你的老师，不是你的上司为你打仗。Even though it looks like they are fighting for you. 虽然是看来好像是他们为你打仗。They're just tools. 他们只不过是一个工具。There's someone who's fighting for you and using these tools. 就说，由于就说，上帝用这些的工具为你而打仗。His name is Jehovah God。他就是这个耶和华上帝。We need to put our trust in the battle owner, the one who's fighting for you, not the tool. 我们需要把信心建立在这个我们这个耶和华，这我们上帝的身上。Because when we put all our trust into our lawyer or into our boss or anybody, our our the physical being who's actually fighting the battle for us and doing the work, let me tell you, they may fail you. 对啊，当时如果我们把我们的心只是放在这些这些律师、这些在地下帮助我们的人的身上，他们可能会使到我们失望。But when you know that God is the one fighting for you， 当你知道上帝为你而战的时候 ，then lawyers can come and go, family members can come and go, bosses can come and go, you will always come out victorious。就是说，虽然你可以换律师，可能家人也有不同的看法，你稳然的还是能够打胜仗。In the book of Chronicles。You will you will read in the book of Second Chronicles. If you got time, go home and read it. It's talking about the story of the people of Judah when they're going out into battle with three different armies. 所以说，在历代之下，在这个二十章二十一到二十六节讲到了，就是说这一些的这些犹太人要去跟三方面的人打仗。Their king was King Jehoshaphat. 这这是就讲到这个约啊，这个的呃约约沙法王。King Jehoshaphat and his people did this. Before they went out in battle, they did this. They went before God and said, "God, help us." When they were not ready to fight, they went to God and said, "God, help us." Because they knew it was His battle. 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 The people of Judah didn't try anything. They didn't even see the enemy yet. They just said, "Lord, they're coming against me. This is your battle. Do your thing." 当时的犹太人他就直接来到上帝的面前，就跟上帝说：“这一个就是你的战争。” Now you all want to know what happens when the Lord fights for you. Let's see what happened to the enemies of Judah when the Lord fought their battle for them. 再问我们来看看呢，这一些犹大呃犹太人这一些的敌人发生什么事情吗 ？Long scripture, but let's read it line by line, huh? After consulting the people, King Joseph had appointed men to sing to the Lord and praise Him. 这在这里，约瑟法以及与民商议了，就设立歌唱的人颂赞耶和华。Saying, "Give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever." 在这里，在当春谢耶和华，因他的慈爱永远长存。This is key right here. They have not gone to the battle. They have not marched out yet. They have not seen the enemy. But what was the first order? Sing and praise to the Lord. 
你你要你要看清楚，在这里，他们当时还没有去打仗，在当时他们已经开始去唱歌而去称颂上帝了。Give thanks to the Lord. Anything won yet? Did God give them anything yet? No, nothing. But they are thanking God. 他们有向神求什么？他们没有，他们只是向上帝只是感恩罢了。That's key. That will bring me to my next point. So just remember that for a while. This is very important. Because this is the next point. And then he goes on to say, as they begin, as they begin to sing and praise. Remember, the battle is there. They are here. They haven't even reached the battle yet. But as they sang and praised here. So, actually, the battle is not yet started. But the Jewish people, they are just singing and praising. When they are singing and praising, they are just singing and praising. When they are singing and praising, they are just singing and praising. When they are singing and praising, The Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab. The Lord fights their battle there, as they sang here. The Lord fought there. 他他们在唱歌的时候，耶和华就派兵去打那些亚门、摩押还有西尔山的人。What God did was just to run through the scripture. God raised up these three armies, three big armies that are coming against Judah. God made these armies go crazy. They both complotted with each other. Two armies joined together and killed the other one, and then they killed each other, and all of them died. Then God said, "Why did God let them win this battle? God said, 'This three armies of the enemy are crushed. They are killing each other. 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 Oh, that's all they were doing. 在当时，其实那些犹大人还没有去到这个战争的地点，他们只不过是一直在走向啊，走前去，一直唱歌的走到那个地方。Verse twenty-four. When they arrive, 在当时这里讲到犹大人来到旷野的望楼。Where, when they arrive at the place, the Bible says the desert that overlooks the vast army. Talking about the battlefield, when they actually arrived at the confrontation with the enemy, when they arrived at the confrontation with the enemy, they only saw dead bodies, no human remains. 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 They only Because instead of carrying their sword, they will a sacrifice, which will bring me to my next point in a while. Because they take this stone, in there to sing. You won't need to lift a finger. 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 You won't need to lift You will find that you are already victorious. When you come to that problem, you need to solve that problem. That 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 And not just that, you don't just win the battle. This is what happened. Ah, 不但只是赢了这个战争，这还有事情发生。Joseph and his men went off to carry their plunder. 就说约沙法和他的人呢，也收取那些敌人的财物。Not just they won the army, they plundered the enemy. 就说也许他们不但只是赢了，他们也收取敌人的财物。In the plunder was great amount of equipment, clothing, and articles of value. They were in these treasures. You can see many of these treasures, the gold, the silver, the gold, 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 the You know, not only is it that you don't need to fight with your enemies, but you can also get his armies to come and take you out. So much plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it will take you three days to collect. That plunder, it
啊，最重要的一点就是在二十六节第四日，众人聚集在比拉加谷的时候，他们在那边称颂耶和华。They started the battle with praise. They ended the battle with praise. 他们在战争之前，他们来到赞美耶和华。他们在战争之后也是赞美耶和华。Which brings me to my final quick point. 这里这里也带到我最后最后的一这呃呃最最后一点。Know when the battle is yours. Know who's fighting for you, and number three, know your role. 也知道这个战争不属于你的，也知道谁为你而战。第三点呢，就是讲到了解你的角色。Your role is to praise. 你的角色就是赞，就是赞美。Hebrews chapter thirteen verse fifteen says this. 这样在希伯来书十三章十五节这么说。Let us offer a sacrifice of praise. 在这里讲到，当你以颂赞。Praise is a sacrifice. 赞美就是一个的献祭 ，of swords and crosses. When you carry your cross instead of carrying your sword, it's a sacrifice. 当你拿起这个十字架的时候呢，其实这次是一个牺牲。What is that sacrifice? It's called praise. 这个牺牲是什么呢？就是赞美。That is what you and I need to do when we are faced with the enemy. 当你 praise God. 当你和我面对敌人的时候，你要做的就是赞美这个事情。Because let me tell you, the people of Judah, when they were praising here, and God was winning the battle there, they didn't hear anything. No messenger came and told them this is the process. God is killing them, so they praised even louder. No, no, they didn't hear anything. They didn't see anything. They didn't feel anything. They didn't smell anything. They didn't know what was God doing in the secret, but they still praised God. 在当时犹大人在那一边，他们唱诗的时候，上帝为他们而战争，为他们铺平这个敌人，他们仍然不知道。不过他们仍然的还是赞美上帝。They did not see the process， 他们没有看到那个过程。But they trusted in the promise。可是他们相信这个的应许。The problem with us is when we know the Lord wants to fight our battles, we we ask God, God, I mean at least me, I would say, God, okay, great that you're fighting my battles for me. Now let's have a sit down. I'll buy some coffee for God and say, God, show me your Excel sheet. Okay, show me your battle plan. So, so what are you going to do today, Lord? 那有时我们会会会可能这样想，就是说我们会和上帝就是说讨价还价说，啊，就是说我我买一杯咖啡给你，我要想知道你为我的战争那个计划是怎么做的。We want God to give us a progress report. 我们要上帝给我们一个的进展的报告。God doesn't work that way. 可是并不是这样的。God just said, Look, I'll do it. I just want you to praise. 上帝只是说，我只是需要你去赞美，我来打仗。You don't need to see the process; just trust the promise. 你不需要来到知道那个过程是什么，只是需要相信我的应许。Because God's not accountable to you; you are accountable to God. 不是，而不是说上帝向你负责，而是你需要向上帝负责。This was the promise that was given to the people of Judah in verse 17, before they even marched out to battle. 这个就是在当时，就是这个对这个犹大的这个的应许。The promise was, you will not have to fight this battle, and this is the promise for you as well. You will not have to fight this battle. Just take up your position, stand firm, and watch how the Lord will deliver to you, deliver to you, Judah and Jerusalem. He will give you what you need. 这里在历代之下二十章十七节这么说：犹大耶路撒冷人呐，你们这一次不要征战，要摆正站坐。看耶和华为你们施行拯救。The people of Judah, if you read the book of Chronicles, they didn't praise God like, oh, I'm dead. Oh, they're going to kill us, you know. Oh, Monday, my crazy boss. Oh, my goodness, what's this song? Oh, it's terrible. That's not how they marched. They marched. They they marched knowing the promise. Believing in the promise, not seeing the process, so they went. Oh, 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 they marched forward, knowing they've already won. Yeah. 在当时的犹大人，他们在前上前进的时候，他们唱着这些诗歌，他们深深的知道，他们已经在打仗，他们会打胜仗。The band can come up now. I don't have much time to go through what praise actually does. Praise is a very, very powerful weapon that you and I have. 说我没有时间再讲这个赞美这个的啊这个主题，因为这个是一个很这个这个是强强而有能力的一个主题。The Bible calls it a sacrifice of praise. 
所以在这里，圣经讲的是是一个这用这一个的赞美作为这一个的献祭。Because it's difficult to praise God when you cannot see you your battle winning. 就是是很难的。你如果你要开口赞美主，因为你看不到你前面的征战。It's easy to praise God when you've already won. 就是当然打胜仗的时候，你很容易赞美神。It's difficult to praise God when the when you're still tormented. 就当然，你要开始赞美神的时候，当时你还是受到这个的苦难。It's difficult to say thank you, Lord, when you haven't seen anything in in the in the physical realm. 当你还没有任何事情发生，你是很难去开口赞美神。That's why it's called a sacrifice. 所以这个时候是是一个是说献这个牺牲的献祭。I do not see it yet, Lord, but I am going to carry this cross and sacrifice. I will sacrifice, sacrifice, and praise you and thank you because when I arrive, I have already won. 比如说，我还没有看到的时候，我拿着这个时机呢，向前走，我一直在赞美你，用这个赞美作为祭。我知道，当我到达的时候，我将会是一个得胜的人。Praise gets our focus off ourselves and puts it back on God. 赞美呢，就是把我们注意注意我们在我们的身上的事情呢，重新放在上帝的身上。Because when we praise God for His magnificence, His sovereignty, and His excellency, it gets our mind, our focus of our inability to His ability. 当我们能够赞美的时候，我们是把我们的无能呢转向给上帝，因为上�i 是大能的上帝。Bible says in Psalms 100, 100 verse 4. We enter His gates with what thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Because here, this is like Psalm 100, verse 4, saying, "Let us enter His gates with what thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise." When we praise God Almighty, we get access to His court where we can present our cases. When we praise God Almighty, we get access to His court where we can present our cases. Right in front, God, this is my case. When we praise God Almighty, we get access to His court where we can present our cases. Psalms 22 verse 3 it says, "The Lord inherit inherits inhabits the praises of His people." 对，在这里在诗篇二十二篇第三节讲，你是圣洁的。When you praise God, you invite the presence of God into your life, into your situation, into your area, into your time zone. 就是当你开始赞美神的时候，你邀请神来到你自己的殿中。How many of you need the presence of God in your life? Can I see your hand? 有多少人要看到上帝的同在 ？I need His presence every day, every day, every day, every day. 我需要他的同在，每一天，每一天都和我同在。If you need His presence, stand with me. 如果你需要这个同在呢，站起来。Let me show you another thing. What praise does? Very important. 我要跟你再分享一个很重要的。In Acts chapter 16. 在这一个的呃，使徒十六章 ，Paul and Silas were in prison。这个保罗和这个希拉在这个监狱里面。Let me just read it to you. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, singing hymns to God. They were in prison. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, and the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. 在夜在半夜，保罗和希拉祷告、唱诗、赞美神，众囚犯也侧耳而听。突然，地大震动，神赐监牢的地基都摇动了，剑门立刻全开，众囚犯的锁链也松开了。Feel like you're in a prison right now. You're trapped. Just praise. 如果你觉得你好像要进到这个这个这个监牢里面呢，你只是需要继续的赞美。When you praise, praise creates an avenue for God to display His power. 就是当你赞美的时候，你就可以创造一个管道呢，来到上帝的面前。How many of you know God likes to show off? 你知道上帝是一个喜欢彰显他大能的上帝。He wants to show you His power. 他上帝要彰显他的大能。Sometimes we beg God, God, show a little bit of your power. Like God is saying, No, I don't want to show. 就是有时候我们讲啊，上帝你，你你你彰显一点点你的你的你的这个的大能。Like God is so shy, you know. I just I don't want to show you my power. I am very powerful, but I don't want you to see it. 啊，上帝说可能我是很怕羞的，我我不就是我不要给你看。God loves to show His power. 上帝很喜欢彰显他的大能。
But when you praise, then he can show his power. As you keep praising him, Lord, you are good. You are good. You are my God. You are the light in my time of darkness. When we start praising, Lord, we build an avenue. God comes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show up. And look at the last part. When the doors were open, everyone's bonds were unfastened. Praise even sets other captives that are around you free. When you praise God, somebody else going through a similar battle, he gets set free and he doesn't know why. Because you praise God. Because he sat beside a praiser, he gets set free. That's why you need this church and connect group because when you are weak and you cannot praise just go and stand beside a praiser and as the praiser praises you get set free as well how many of you are going through battles and you need God to intervene can I see your hand how many of you I want you to come in front. Take a step of it, come in front. The band, anybody going through something, anybody needs God to intervene, if, if that is you, I want you to take a step forward, even if you're on the chair. Try and take a step forward. If you're playing the keys, just raise one hand. If you're a drummer, where you raise one hand. Wind, don't raise hands, just move forward. <laughs> Going through a better, come, come in front. Those so who are going through a better, come in front. Come in front. God's, about, God's about to do something very powerful. I'll share with you a word that I received last week when I was preaching in KL. Very powerful. I tell you, I hardly hear an audible voice of God. How many of you hear that all the time? Hardly, hardly, right? But I heard God speak very clearly last week. I was so worried about the atmosphere of worship, whether all the call people will come in front. How do I pray? I was so worried about that. God rebuked me while worship was going on. I was playing the guitar. I heard God clearly say this. Hey, hey, you worry about preaching the word. I'll worry about confirming it. And this one clear word, appointed. Appointed. Meaning, you are appointed today for this specific moment. God actually wants to set you free right now. So I'm going to read out this scripture. I'm going to declare this scripture over your life. I want, I want you to respond. Even those who did not come in front, I want you to respond to the word. Lift up your hands and say yes and amen because this is not just any word, not any scripture I just picked out from Google. No, no. This is the word of the Lord for you at this a specific time. Psalms 105 verse 1 to 15. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. Sing unto Him, sing psalms unto Him, talk of all His wondrous works. That's all talking about praise. Verse 5, remember His marvelous works that He has done. We'll jump to verse 8. He has remembered his covenant forever. 
the covenant the word which he commanded to a thousand generations 所以他的他他这个他这个愿是直到千代 the covenant that he made with Abraham and he swore unto Isaac 这个的愿也就是和亚伯拉罕所立的愿和以撒所起的愿 that covenant is for you and me today 这个愿也是给你和我 ready to hear what his role is in your battle 你要知道你将会在你的征战当中得胜 verse 11 第十一节 unto you I will give the land of Canaan and the lot of your inheritance. And he goes on to say, when they were few in a number, and if they were even strangers in a strange land, and they moved from one country to another country, he allowed no man to do them harm. He reproved kings for their sakes. It means he reprimanded kings. You think the king is tormenting you? He will even reprimand kings for your sakes. And was 15. Touch not my anointed. I want you to say, I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. Say it like you mean it, I am anointed. Tell the devil, I am anointed. Tell your problems, I am anointed. Tell your enemies, I am anointed. The Lord says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You are protected, church. What then should we say to these things the Bible says if God is for us? And then it goes to a question. Who? Who can be against us? That's a happy statement. If God is for me, who? Who? Who wants to come against me? You can't. God is for who? Who? God is for me. You want to praise today? Is it time to praise God? Let's praise. And praise like the people of Judah. While you praise here, remember? While you praise here, He's winning your battle there. When you arrive, when you arrive, you're going to come out victorious and rich in Jesus' name. Let's praise God.